is Richard Edelman is the CEO of Edelman, uh, the company behind the Trust Barometer. He joins me now. So great to have you with us. Look, Gen Z is pushing for more meaningful work and this work-life balance. Um, full disclosure, I'm a millennial, but I'm closer to the, the previous generation. Work-life balance doesn't really exist in my life, but it's fascinating to see what younger employees are pushing for. Um, give me a sense of what they're thinking and, and why um, they're actually, they have, you know, the strength and I guess the gravitas to be able to go to the employer and say, look, we want more out of life and this is what we want from you. So as we come to Labor Day in the U.S., what you see is that you have Gen Z being belief-driven buyers of products and also values-driven employees. And since there's such low unemployment, uh, they get to uh, control their relationship uh, with their employer. And they get to say, look, you're the most trusted institution, my employer. Trust is local. But we, in return, expect to have a voice in decisions. We want to have um, a employer who actually is making change in the world. And we want you as CEO to speak up on our behalf. Look, it's also fascinating. I was just looking at um, how worried the, the younger generation are about world issues, um, specifically the group between 18 to 24 years old. Um, a lot more worried than the older group, the 27 to 42 year old group. Um, how does this affect their ability to work and engage? Is that spilling over into their work life? I think it's fascinating that um, a uh, millennial is uh, different to a Gen X uh, because in a Gen Z, what you observe is much more willingness to work through the company channels to make change um, on the first group. But, you know, the Zs basically say, I'm taking it uh, direct to the streets. It's sort of 50 50. Um, and there's also yeah. an incredible um, willingness to write about what's happening at the company. 17 point jump in a year uh, on commenting about what's happening at the company and social media. That's a fundamental change. So we're talking and we're demanding action. Um, in terms of the fear, I think that everyone is worried about, right? So artificial intelligence, we're all worried about what that means for future jobs, how that's going to in influence um, our lives going forward. To what extent is that starting to become an issue? I mean, I think that the other narrative is learn to work with AI, which can help you prepare for jobs of the future. There's a shocking finding in this study, which is that deskless workers, in other words, a factory worker or even a, mm -hmm. a house painter, could be a doctor, someone who's not sitting in front of a screen, has substantially less trust in institutions, like 30 points lower trust in government and in business, and actually sees much less achievement on sustainability or DE&I um, than their colleagues who are in the executive class or who are sitting at a desk. And so this deskless worker group uh, is feeling disenfranchised, um, not listened to. So the smart CEO will follow the model of a, um, the CEO of Starbucks um, who's gone out into the stores, actually put on the green apron and watched and participated in how the workers are serving clients. And that makes all the difference because he's listening and then he's able to enact change. Really fascinating. I mean, I've also just seen some of some of the the findings here that they really are worried about job losses. And I find that quite interesting because also the list of demands are very different to what we've seen with the previous generations. I want you to tell me how that is, you know, kind of moving into into a specific direction. On one hand, you're worried about job loss. You, on the other hand, you want work life balance. You're quite demanding of your employer. You know, how do you reconcile these issues? Well, there's even a third aspect, which is um, I'm demanding yeah. that my voice be heard and that the company follow my lead in a sense and, and stand up for me on issues ranging from sustainability, diversity, equity and inclusion, geopolitics, wages and reskilling. I want my company face forward on these issues. Now, I in particular want the company to act. I want to see change. I want to see tangible efforts to have improvement and measurable change. And so all these siren songs about, well, walk away from ESG, and th that's wrong. That's bad advice to the CEO. You've got to hang in there because the expectation of your customers, of your employees, and of your communities is that you are showing continuous improvement. Yeah. Okay, Richard, one last question very quickly. 
Are multinationals, ICOs, are businesses, small and big, going to comply with some of these demands? I think the smart company is going to have a combination of what are my core competencies yeah. and what are my values and select those issues in which you can make a difference. Um, every company can improve its environmental footprint, improve on its DEI scores. And then if you're Heineken, getting out of Russia is a signal to the entire world that you are a decent company and that you're making change. All right, great to have you with us, uh, Richard. Great Thank to you. speak to you. Much appreciated for your time. All right.